Now before we begin, let me just say that there's many ways to create a helix. Yep, more ways than we could ever have time to discuss. This video is a look at how I create a helix. Stay calm and do not adjust your sets. This is a breaking news alert. We go live to Strasburg, Virginia where an area man has used mysterious materials to create a lightweight model railroad helix. We're on the scene to capture a potential world record event. As you can see, there are no tricks and no wires suspending the helix from above. The builder mentioned that if anything, he'd need straps to hold it down, it's so light. <laughs> Alright, so you get the idea that this three ring circus, I mean helix, is lightweight. A better question is, is it strong enough? Yeah, let's find out. That's a small one level test section I made for just this purpose. It's not even glued together. Imagine that, it'll even hold a locomotive. Oh look, a real world helix! That's some footage I shot when I was at the Hatchapi Loop in California. Yep, it's a real live, real world helix. Well, about as close as it gets. So why do we as model railroaders even need a helix, as opposed to no helix, better known as a no licks? You know, I had a joke for that, but my wife made me take it out. And of course, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Even on a grade where you have to reach higher elevation, the same answer would apply, right? But it can be a little different on our model railroads where space is concerned. Let's take a straight line and divide it up into circles that equal the same length as the straight line. Now let's take those rings and stack them on top of each other. Better yet, let's put a slice in one side of each of those rings and create a spiral. Now it's not brain surgery and it may bore a few that already know this, but now we have the same amount of rise in the same length of track. Well sure, you can certainly do this in a straight line if you have the space. Some folks have unlimited space, but for those of us that don't, and I sure don't, do you? Well that's another story, and that other story is why I need a helix. All right, so you do the math. What took up almost 35 feet before now only consumes four. Ah, uh, a new layout we're building. A layout with space considerations. That's limited space considerations, and now you see why the available real estate is so valuable. Now, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about the layout design itself in this video. We'll touch more on that in a future video. With this limited space, we have about 20 feet in length to work with. I definitely wanted a continuous run with provisions for storage underneath. Do you notice that our helix has a twin? So designing our helix, where do we begin? Well, I'm certainly not a mathematician, so to make life easier, I did some research online. Yep, there's lots of info available online. This is a website that has a lot of model railroad related info and a handy dandy helix calculator. Of course you have to know what you need, so once you figure that out, just plug in the numbers. Yada yada, 22 inch radius, 2.5 inch trains, 9.5 inch rise, 4 inch width, 8 segments. Let's double check everything and bingo! You can take that information and apply it to the construction of a helix. So this mysterious material we've seen, what is it? I'm using gator board. As you've witnessed, this material is lightweight and strong. It's typically used in print shops and in sign shops, but you can find it right online. That's all great, but is it cost effective? Sure, but that's all relative. To question the cost would be the same as figuring out what your time is worth. While we know gator board is lightweight and strong, is it easy to handle and cut? Yep, and that's the number one decision maker for me. We don't need any electric tools. Most of us know how tough it is to handle and cut plywood. I know my choice to you. Really for the most part you just need to know how to measure, draw lines, and then cut. 
Here I'm using a CAD design program to make it a little easier for me. Our track center line is 22 inch radius. So the center line circle will be 44 inches in diameter. And then I'm going to add two more circles on the inside and outside that are plus 2 inches and minus 2 inches. This will give us our 4 inch wide sub road bed. Now all we have to do is divide this thing into 8 equal sections. Now in theory I could use this as a cutting template by printing it out on a plain piece of paper and then drawing it onto the board itself and making my cuts. We can't just put these pieces end to end and hope they stay there so we have to actually glue something to them. I came up with a clamp or at least I call it a clamp. These clamps can be used above or below doesn't matter there's plenty of clearance. From our helix calculator we determined that we need three inches of vertical clearance between the levels. There's quite a few different ways that you can make risers or spacers whichever you want to call them. The typical method is using wooden or plastic or even foam blocks cut to size. Another popular method is threaded rod and nuts and it's nice because you can adjust each level as needed but it's a lot of work. You can fine tune your height but it is a lot of work. I had initially intended to use the block method but then I came up with this idea of cutting these risers out of gator board on the laser and that way I could have an exact fit and I could cut a bunch of them. The illustration and graphics I just showed you were actually the cutting template that I'm going to use on the laser to cut these out. So what we need to do is cut the gator board down to manageable sized pieces that fit on the laser. Now sure, I'm using a laser to cut out each single piece, but this can be done by hand a lot faster and a lot easier than it would be with plywood. I know there's that one guy out there that's saying, sure, he used a laser and it made it quick and easy, but you know what, it's still a long process because I had to design all this and set them up in cut files. And here you can see all the pieces needed to complete three rings of this helix. Now you know we're going to have to do this twice because we have two of these things. Quick, I'll show you how two pieces of the gator board fit inside that groove. Nice snug fit. Those are two clamp pieces, but I'm just kind of showing you what they look like. Now because assembling this helix is going to be a breeze, we're just going to breeze right through this. Get it? Breeze? We're going to start by taking all these pieces and connect them together into quarter pieces. This will make it a little bit easier for us. I'm going to do this on a nice flat surface and I'm just going to use standard super glue. That's right, super glue. Now, just like in every one of our videos, I'm not going to insult your intelligence by describing every step of the process. You get the idea and you can see what I'm doing here. We're going to connect these quarter pieces together the same way. Once this thing is dry, I can move it out of the way and start on the other two rings. And then when they're all done, I can put them all together. As I mentioned before, it doesn't matter which side the clamps are on, the top or the bottom. There's plenty of clearance both vertically and laterally. Hey look, we could make a giant slinky. Now it's time to install these pre-cut risers and they're just going to slip in the groove over top the clamp and the sub road bed on each level. If we were doing this with blocks by hand, we would already have the blocks pre-cut to the right height and then we could just go in and install them. The side closest to us is actually the back of the helix, so it has four levels of connection where the other sides have three. Now I can work my way around the helix installing four risers at each connection point. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to add a little dab of glue to keep it all in place. Now we need something for this to sit on, so we're going to create a base out of half inch thick gator board. And while I was at it, I hand cut a nice large access hole here. Now this is what it looks like with all the riser pieces installed. And while I'm at it, I want to show you this. Remember, this is the back side. Well, this is going to be right up against the wall. So I took out the laser cut pieces and added these blocks just for clearance. 
Before we secure the helix to the base, we'll want to go around and add leveling blocks in. Now this is a process that's going to take a little bit, but I'm using blocks that I cut from that gator board, both the half inch and the 3 16 Sweet, huh? And it's still lightweight. Yeah, these guys are 12 years old now, and I don't think they want any part of the helix. They just want to take a nap. This is the right hand helix, and this is the left hand helix. This one has track on it already, so guess what it's time to do? I want to thank Loco Joe's Hobby in Inwood, West Virginia for sponsoring the track in this video. As we all know, there's a lot of different ways we could do this. I could have used flex track, but I decided to use Atlas Code 83 22 inch radius true track. As you probably know, the pieces go together quickly and they stay in shape. It makes life a lot easier. 22 inch being the radius that I needed for this helix, it makes it a no-brainer. I will tell you that in my experience with previous helices that I built, did I say that right? I used flex track and after using this stuff, I really do wish they made it in every radius. Again, in this video, I'm not going to go into too much of the overall design, but I want to be able to move forward. With that, I started working on this corner of the layout where the track will leave the helix and continue on to the layout proper. So that brings us to the final question. Does it work? Come on, you have to ask. If you know me by now, you know I wasn't just going to let it sit. Perhaps those in the market for a helix will find this lightweight and easy to handle material interesting. Remember, there's no right or wrong. If it works, it works. This is Joey Ricard with TrackSideScenery.com. Thanks for watching and see you next time.